If you've ever lived in a mobile home before, you probably know the struggle of dealing with this. And no, I'm not talking about my terrible mess. Ignore that. What I'm talking about is these really weird layouts that just pop up because the mobile home has to save on space or something like that. So you end up with something that doesn't have standard measurements. You can't really just run to Lowe's or Home Depot and grab something to replace it. And it's really a pain in the butt. In today's video, I'm gonna be dealing with just that. I'm going to be completely remodeling this entire wall segment from the bottom up and making it into a much cleaner, more modern kitchen buffet style, bar style, whatever other catchy words you want to use for it. <laughs> now don't tell anyone, but I'm only doing this because I really want to make this really, really big wall terrarium right here. And as of right now, there are cabinets in the way. So what am I going to do if I want a really big wall terrarium? Well, I'm going to completely remodel this entire space and put a terrarium there. So yeah, that'll be the next video. But for now, let's get started on this. Yeah, this part isn't rocket science. It is so much fun. Just ripping and tearing everything out of the way. This old particle board comes apart super easy. So I'm able to just rip these doors off and then rip off all the supports. Just one thing after another, ripping everything out of the way. The base cabinets put up a little bit more of a fight with the doors coming off somewhat similar to the top cabinets. But when I was removing these supports, I accidentally cut my hand pretty bad on one of these little door holders. So I actually had to stop the camera and then put a bandaid on and then go ahead and proceed ripping out the rest of the cabinet. With the base cabinets out of the way, all that was left to do was remove these little wall seam covers and take out this metal just temporarily so I can paint without getting it all messy. Alrighty, so now that we have the cabinets removed and everything cleared away, we have a big blank wall as a clean slate for our restoration. But before we start doing any painting or anything like that, there's a few adjustments I want to make. If I'm going to have a big wall terrarium set up on these base cabinets, it's going to need some power for its lights and pumps and whatever else I can come up with. But the problem is, the terrarium will be blocking this power outlet right here. So, here's what I'm going to do about that. Step 1. Cut off the circuit breaker that goes to that power outlet. Step 2. Test the power outlet to make sure I got the right circuit breaker. Step 3. Make some marks underneath the power outlet a little ways down. Step 4. Make an outline roughly the same size and shape as the outlet box. Step 5. Get a rotary tool and set it so that it will not cut any deeper than the thickness of the drywall itself. Step 6. Follow the outline to cut a hole in the wall. Step 7. Pat yourself on the back for following step five and making sure that you didn't cut too deep because there happened to be an electrical line where it shouldn't have been directly behind where you were cutting. Step eight, pull the wire a little bit out of the wall and cut it. Step nine, push the wires through the holes in the electrical outlet box and push the outlet box into the wall, leaving the wires available to work on. Step 10, take your brand new outlet, wire it up correctly, and put it into the outlet box. And now we have power down here as, as well as up here. <laughs> it's really not that big of a change, but you know, now we can put the wall terrarium here. We don't have to worry about blocking this thing because we will have power underneath the base cabinet. And I'm gonna stop rambling and get onto the next part where I tell you about how I'm gonna fill this wall seam in. You get these annoying, ugly wall seams in mobile homes, and they're kind of a nuisance, but I'm gonna take this time to fill this one in, as well as all the little bitty holes that were left behind from dragging the old cabinets out. So yeah, why am I still talking? Let's get right into it. Once again, no rocket science here, just taking this putty and cramming it down into this wall seam to make sure it's thoroughly filled. Then I do the same thing for all the little holes and all the little cracks in the wall. And with this type of putty, once it's had plenty of time to sit and cure, it will turn from pink to white, letting you know that it's ready for sanding. So I take this little vibrating sander and run it over all the surfaces, removing all the excess putty and making everything flat and smooth. Once everything is smooth and ready to go, I take a cleaning solution and spray it over the wall, wiping it down with a microfiber towel to make sure that I remove any dust, grease, or anything that would keep the paint from sticking really well. Then it's just a matter of laying on a few good coats of primer, making sure that the wall is thoroughly covered because I'm going to have a tough time covering up this nasty red and its transition between the white wallpaper behind it. But after a few coats, the primer starts to cover the old paints, so it's time to put on the new paint. 
With this, I'm a little bit more worried about finesse than just covering everything. I want to make sure I cover everything, but I want to make sure that I do it smoothly, making a final pass over everything to make sure that there's no obvious lines or splotches where some areas of the paint are thicker than other areas, causing for lighter and darker and just kind of messy looking paint. I don't want any of that. I want smooth looking paint. So I take my time, do it right, and just like that, this wall is looking 10 times better, all fresh with its new coat of paint. So it's time to put all the little details back in, like these metal roofing accent pieces and the wall outlet covers. So with all that, our wall is looking 10 times better now, so it's time to start putting in the new cabinets. Unfortunately, this is the part that doesn't really have very many workarounds. Unless you happen to know how to make your own cabinetry, you're gonna have to most likely order custom cabinets from some cabinet shop. Most of your standard mobile homes can also be referred to as manufactured homes because they are manufactured in a way very similar to an assembly line. What that means is when they're designing the mobile home, they're making everything custom to fit. So little quirky spaces like this don't have to stick to a specific manufacturer's standard measurement system because they're just going to make a whole bunch of cabinets for however many of these mobile homes they're going to make. Unfortunately, that makes things real difficult whenever it comes to remodeling these mobile homes because you can't just run out to Lowe's or Home Depot to grab some new cabinets to put into place. In this situation, I happen to get pretty lucky because a friend of mine is actually starting up his own little woodworking business and he was happy to make me some custom cabinets that would fit just right and I think that they turned out really good. I want to leave a shout out to the guy because his work is like really good, but unfortunately his business is so new that he hasn't even been able to come up with a name for it yet. So I'll have to link it in the description. Hi buddy, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Anywho, now I have some good looking cabinets, but putting them into place is a little bit more complicated than you might think. Beginning with the base cabinet, we have to expand this slot in the flooring to make sure that it will fit this new bigger cabinet. So I take the base cabinet and move it into the position where it's going to be mounted to the wall and then trace around the bottom of it to show where I need to cut the base flooring in order to allow the base of the cabinet to sit flush with the subfloor below. I have to be super careful to make this cut as smooth as I possibly can, making sure that I'm not cutting too deep into the subflooring below but I somehow managed to pull it off so that when I put the base cabinet into place, it sits nice and neatly down into the flooring with a nice flush cut around the edges. With that taken care of, I took a quick little detour to cut a hole in the back plate of this cabinet to allow access to the outlet I installed earlier. And once that was good to go, it was time to start trying to mount this thing to the wall. And this is where we run into yet another issue when it comes to dealing with mobile homes. In normal houses, the stud centers are standardized to either 16 or 24 inches apart, but in mobile homes, I have found that to be completely inconsistent. In this mobile home, I have torn apart plenty of the walls and I have found 12 inch studs, 15 inch studs, 24 inch studs, and some that literally only have a stud where there needs to be a splice in the drywall. So if you're dealing with a mobile home, your best bet is to get a stud finder and spend your time carefully trying to line out exactly where the studs are and hope that you have them in the right positions to do what you need to do. In this case, the studs were completely inconsistent with there being two right side by side on this edge and two about a foot apart on this other edge and then there being only one in the middle of the wall where the drywall had to come together. So I did the best I could, put screws in where I could, and I think it's good enough to hold this cabinet in place. Moving on to the wall cabinets, it's a little bit more of a challenge, specifically if you're working by yourself. Given that's what I had to deal with, here's what I came up with to try to make it a little bit easier. I started by drilling the holes in the cabinets for the mounting screws and drilled the screws into those holes so that they would stick out just a little bit. You see, I need to hold this cabinet up into place and then mark where I need to drill holes in the wall for the drywall anchors. The problem with that is I can't actually fit anything through these holes that will reach to the wall in order to mark it. So by having these screws sticking out just a little bit and carefully holding the cabinet up roughly where it needs to be with a level on it just to be extra sure, 
I can push this cabinet into the wall and those screws make tiny little dents showing me exactly where I need to drill the holes for the drywall anchors. Yes, this is a little bit of a finicky solution, but again, if you're working on your own, you gotta find little tricks like this in order to be able to do these things without messing them up too much. Once I had the first cabinet mounted and secured, I just had to make a few measurements to ensure that the spacing between the base cabinets and the wall cabinets would be consistent, and then I used the same exact method on the second wall cabinet to get it mounted up into place nice and secure. So now I had two wall cabinets securely in place, level and evenly spaced from the base cabinet below. And that meant the only thing left to do was add the final touch of the butcher block countertop for this base cabinet. It definitely was not the most financially responsible decision to go with a designer butcher block countertop, but it looked too good to pass up. So I got it, and with a few careful measurements to make sure it would only have a one inch overhang, I cut it to size and put it in place. With a few little adjustments to the wall trim so that the countertop would sit flush with the wall, everything was in place, so I just had to go under the counter and screw up from underneath to hold it securely in place. Well, after all that effort, here's what it looks like. And I think it turned out looking pretty good. Yes, it could definitely look better. And without anything right here, it looks a little bit too open, but at least I won't be bonking my head against anything whenever I'm trying to work on this counter and it makes this space more usable. On top of that, if I were actually doing this for a normal kitchen remodel, then I would put some display shelves right here for putting fancy plates or china on and make a lighting fixture up here just to add a little bit more ambience. But in this case, as I mentioned, I'm pretty much just doing this remodel so that I can make a massive wall terrarium. So it does look a little empty, but that's because it's supposed to be empty so that I can fit a big wall terrarium here. How many times have I said that in this video now? Regardless, I'm really excited about having this taken care of with some good quality cabinets, this awesome butcher block countertop, and the nice cool gray. I know it might be a little bit drab to some people, but I really like it. And with this done, I can't wait to get started on the project of building a nice big display terrarium here. So if you all want to see that as well, keep an eye on the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video when it comes out. And if you like the video, hit the like button. Other than that, let me know in the comments below what you think about this project, any projects that you might want to see from me in the future. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And until next time, I hope you all stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. Peace out.